This is group three from RC7. We are giving a presentation of our hemp lift project. Let's start with the background. Concrete is the most common and vital material contains the most embodied energy and its large volume contributed to the aesthetic of brutalist architecture. So our refurbishment target firstly focuses on post-war buildings in London. As this old popularity of brutalism caused many drawbacks from material problems to energy waste, demolishment became the common option, which is a very unsustainable approach for our built environment. Though some existing buildings have been refurbished through renovation, there is a lack of sustainable agenda. Therefore, here we introduce the urban cliff hypothesis, which identifies that our cities are often akin to the habitat templates of cliffs. Based upon the similarities in their physical composition, where both have a lack of soil, we need to create spatial conditions that can gather these natural elements to foster species growth and promote urban biodiversity, among which wind is the most basic element. Meanwhile, we also combine the concept of urban corridors to consider the refurbishment on a larger scale in a single building. Green corridors in cities can be defined as linear natural infrastructure that links up other green and open spaces to form a green urban network. In addition to transferring nature elements and adding greenery, the corridors can also create visual pleasures and direct to protected viewpoints in the city. Here we did some wind corridor testing in different cities according to their wind rose pattern to see its possibilities with the building blocks. Our methodology started with a typical prototype to generate spatial conditions with wind from interior space to exterior facade, from building to urban scale. To study the implication of wind simulation on architecture in the city, at first we started from the most general concrete block types to test the spatial condition generated by the wind simulation. A visible car was created by the invisible wind. After generating the basic wind erosion geometry, we can control several parameters volume by changing the shape and radius of the wind used to produce different outcomes. At the next stage, we introduce style transfer. From pick swoe picks to three-dimensional, we can transfer the organic pattern from nature to the texture of the surface. Then we develop this method to embed intelligence, such as solar, exposure, curvature. Our style transfer application in spatial testing develops from displacement extrude to normal map extrude to floor plans extrude. The implementation method from 2D to 3D is based on the unwrapping of UV maps. Higher resolution texture generated by style transfer was applied to the facade of the spatial form, which created organic surface forces rounding and supporting. Here we got the section plan of each floor to have a more clear view of the wind pattern. From the plan, we can see the shape of space after wind erosion. Compared with the color map, a normal map contains 3D vector information which can help generate many pocket areas at the spatial level. Here are the initial outcomes of our wind carving space. We improve it by adding a normal map to transfer the 2D information to the 3D level. After generating pocket space to make the current spatial condition more suitable for humans to use and interact with, we utilize the style transfer in a new way to solve the limitation by processing the information from each plan. With a clear boundary of outer and inner space and new floor plates, Next step we establish the facade zone in between as transitional space, and style transfer was applied to create more organic spatial quality. Here is the addition of all floor plans. Now, the new floor plan with color information can be used as a content image for style transfer, and here shows the in process. In this animation you can see how the facade zone changed by style transfer when the wind blow across this building and the outcome generated from style transfer. Until now all the transformations were picks to picks. In this step, we extruded the style transfer plans and enabled them with three-dimensional qualities. Here shows all floors stacking up together. The new spatial volume was inserted back to the original structure. The style transferred facade zone of each floor were listed on the right. We chose hempcrete as the alternative of concrete for this refurbishment design. As the ingredients are simple and accessible, its making process is relatively easy. We carried out tests with different ingredient ratios, and hempcrete can be shaped into curved form. Based on material tests, we chose the component units quad Delaunay loft as they can be assembled seamlessly while keeping the unfitness on the surface. This shows the assembly order of the components in different sizes.
And here are the physical model assembly in reality. The logic of components scale and their assembling is based on sunlight analysis as well, and three layers with black, gray and white were created according to the level of exposure to the sun. Here you may get a better view of the different components scale on one floor. Including scale of the normal and small component on one floor. Now we apply the assemble of one floor to all the floors. The gray and black color information represent the degree of solar exposure. Then the voxelization started. Voxel size varied from 2000 mm to 300 mm. This shows the final decision of the component size and then we applied it with quad Delaunay loft. After completing the wind carves assembly methodology, we developed a facade system to combine with the interior spatial condition, also through wind simulation on the facade. To avoid making the building denser and heavier in the new facade, we remain the wind pattern but replace the components with openings. And there is a more practical transition edge between the wind pattern and the original facade. This is the final combined version of our prototype methodology exploration. With the experience of prototyping at the architectural level, we enter the design of a larger level, the green corridor of the block. We chose our design site in Athens like Abettis Hill, where has a large stock of 1960s concrete building blocks. It is located between a city park and a hillside. Therefore, it has rich wind resources. The reason for not choosing London due to its complicated ownership of the real estate leading to difficulties of a whole block's refurbishment. By contrast, Athens has a large stock of our refurbishment targets and the climate and wind conditions are very suitable for plants to grow. We make our first wind simulation on the block level and analysis the formation of green corridors on the voxel scale. The green voxel is the parts affected strongly by the wind and are selected to build the green corridor. We concentrated on five buildings at the corner of the middle street. And our second wind simulation on the architectural scale is carried out and a continuous wind direction trajectory is generated in a whole space where humans and non-human can coexist. Then we fabricate the whole big carving park by separating them into voxels. The platform where people can walk and habitat are selected by sunlight analysis. Different sizes of components are assembled on the wind carving shell according to its curvature condition. As the angle of convex increases, the ability to collect rainwater will also decrease, so the size of the components will also become smaller. And the assembled components are stabilized by the metal edge. When the long-lasting nature condition brings seeds, nutrients, rain, and light to hemp cliff, plants may gradually grow and cover the hempry. After three years, five years, or even longer, this place will provide a pleasant co-living space for habitation. In larger part of the assembly part, components will be fixed by a basic frame on the back and the metal edge together. The stone slabs are fixed on the original floor slabs with the reserved positions of columns. When we consider refurbishing a building and be more eco-friendly, it needed to be put on a larger scale. Individual greening of the building is not affecting, and just putting a green facade outside a building makes no difference for an urban scale. The way we are looking to make our cities greener, and refurbishment in a more sustainable method is applying it to lots of buildings. We only focus on the five buildings of the street and follow this method. We think this whole street can be refurbished together, create a green corridor in this whole building complex serving the community and serving the city.